Yep. So it's something to think about. Is maybe, and I know Pedro's keen. Pedro's always talking about that about what his players can do and try to work on formations and training based on their abilities. And I know he talked about doing defensive training during National Week based on the defenders they had and the type of crosses they fit. It's good. See, Pedro stays pragmatic. Mm. We will find a way to get these players together. Warburton never tried. And I think that was one of the success stories, obviously, of Graham Murty's short time. He got them all, He picked the players and picked them in a formation based on what the guys could do, based on what he saw. Mm. And if Pedro sticks to that, I think the future's bright. I think I, it's going to be tough. Don't... don't we had to say we the sheep twice, Hibs and, and Hearts, in the next short while. But to be honest, now, unlike last season, you're not dreading that. No. You're not mm-hmm. worried about this aerial bombardment or big physical teams putting the boot in. I'm a lot less wary of these teams than I was last season. I think so. what everyone can agree uh, or I'd be very surprised if anyone disagreed, but of course you may, and you can get in touch with us. Uh, Ibrox Rocks on Twitter, Scott Hart Hand on Twitter, uh, if you do disagree. But the playing squad is better. There are better players, and there are uh, there is a better balance of a squad there, I think. Yeah, I mean, you saw a guy like Holt, who played every game last year, and as you say, he's now finding his niche. He's, he's a brilliant, energetic sub, but he's playing a really good part in things. And but maybe we shouldn't have been relying on him. Maybe Jason Holt wasn't quite the man to start every single SPL game. But you know, as part of a squad, a bigger, deeper squad, he's finding his place. There are still gaps, of course. Um, if Morelos falls down a manhole and is out for a few weeks, then you're slightly buggered. I'm not a world-ass fan. And, but apart from that, we do seem to have some cover. I mean, we're really good down the right side. We've got a few midfielders coming in. And the defence is rock solid. McCrory's been great. And Wes is having a really good season. He's hard to yes, let anything in. Yes, that's, that's a good point. He, um, he's Well, he had that start earlier that he continued eight from 11, but I think that he's improved the last... The whole team has improved the last few weeks. You can't you can't deny that. Um, or was, it it your Cammy, was it your Cammy who said, though, if you looked at the goals, they were all sweetly struck. It's not like you can see the eight from 11 savable shots. No, that's a fair point. That, no, no, quite a lot of them were like, the guy was through, picked his spot... Not everyone's Manny Neuer. I mean, a lot of these goals I don't think were savable. I think what he's cutting out is errors. I can't remember the last time you thought, shit, Wes is about to drop the ball. Yeah, he, he hasn't chucked one in for a while, that's true, and let's hope we're not jinxing him. But, um, yeah. He, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but he he does deserve a, a word of praise, I think. Now, last thing from the game before we move on to the kind of main talking point of this week so far was the red card for the St. Johnson player. And... Uh, to me, it looked a definite red card. I thought a guy on a yellow pulled him back, and that was all there was to it. But after the match, Tommy Wright said, "Oh, you know, he went down easy." And the, after the whole Morelis is a nutter thing, which people have been trying, there now seems to be uh, in the media a bit of a campaign to say he goes down easy. Now, don't get me wrong; I don't think he tried very hard to stay on his feet. But it's modern football. Let's not. Let's not pretend that this doesn't happen with every team. The, the days of the Brian Clough, I'll book you for going down too easy, are long gone. And he was fouled. He went down. The ref, in my opinion, took the correct course of action. What is this a genuine? Is this just me blue tinted spec, Scott? Uh, and Morelis is a terrible diver, or is it yet another thing that's being invented to try and cause some full controversy around us? I think the latter. Um, first of all, have we been awarded many penalties this season? I can't. How many? Two, I think. How many? Two? And both of them were pretty. No argument. Is that right? There's yeah. no argument, really. Yeah. So the number of times that Morelos has dived to get a penalty is zero. Yes. No times. And I think that's probably the stat that people should be looking at. It looks like he's dived no times to, to win an unfair advantage of a penalty. He's a good. He's a young lad. He's speaking his third language now. He's learning his third language. He's playing well. And the one thing I think about him, ironically, I would say he's the opposite. I think he's quite a robust lad who likes to give it and take it. He loves a, t- a tussle. And I don't think he, th- he dives about as if he's been shot. In fact, I would probably say my initial opinion is that he doesn't. For a striker these days, I think he likes to see his feet. He likes the challenge. I think he's quite a physical player. I, I wouldn't say he's a diver I've never noticed that. I have to say I've not noticed that yet. 
There's some talk in the media that he's been scouted by Aston Villa, or the name mentioned. Now, some of our fans get upset by this sort of thing, but to me, it's a good sign because, let's face it, it's been a wee while since we've had a player that was worth sending a scout to, to go and see. So, if he's playing well, the fans love him. Yeah, I love him, you love him, everyone loves him. Deservedly so, because he's made such a good impression, and because he is a good player. He's going to attract attention, that, and that's surely the job of a scout of a football club, is if he hears someone is doing well, especially in a league 200 miles up the road, he's going to drive and see the boy. Surely that's just football as it's always been. Well, firstly, can I correct you there, David? Um, we have got a letting agency in our office block, and two years ago they scouted him black because they had some paint and decorating they needed done. Da boom boom. I hang you Um Yes, I think also, can I also add it's the job of our scouts? Like, David's right, but it's job of our scouts to bring in players who will be sellable. And that was something that Ali didn't really manage. And even Mark Warburton, to an extent, didn't manage. See if Marielos is brought in for 900000 and we sell him for $5 million to Villa. Good. That's our scouts doing their job too. Mm-hmm. Villa scouts are doing their job. And the idea that some of our fans have that we should somehow... Not give press, not give tickets to Villa scouts. Keep them out. Lock the door. How do we switch off the TV cameras? How do we stop I, people it's seeing where Ellis playing football? And you want you want your guy. You, you want scouts to see him. You want more scouts to see him because you want if eventually. Alfredo Morelos is not going to finish his career at Rangers. That's a fact, and I'm sorry. He's for a five-year deal, and he's not seen out the five years. Yes, no, um, no he's going to stay for hopefully, I would say, two seasons realistically because. At the end of that, then it will be hopefully time to cash in. And you want 10 or 12 clubs that are regularly sending representatives to watch him. You want a bidding war. You want to be in a position to take top dollar for the guy. And then you want to reinvest that cash into the squad. And hopefully, as you say, that our scouts, well, in this case, it was John, uh, Jonathan Johansson. Hopefully, he's got a few more uh, gems from Finland up his sleeve. But that that's kind of what we want our business model to be and it's the same with Fabio Cardoso you're hoping he improves um, to, to, to be at a level where clubs are coming in and we're getting 10 12 million for him that has to be what what we want to do and it goes back to getting attached to a player it, it's going to be difficult at Rangers to get attached to players because in the main you're going to get two years out of them and I'll tell you why if they do badly, you want rid of them. And if they do well, they'll probably be sold on to a bigger league. Not a bigger club, a bigger league. And that is just an unfortunate consequence of the way modern football has gone and the position that our league finds itself in in 2017. So you might get it with a youngster that stays a bit longer. Maybe an ex- maybe a Dorans could play for four or five seasons who's come and wants to finish his career with it, that kind of thing. But... Overall, the idea that you're going to buy in a guy who's 23 and he's going to be there, you know, for for five years, it, it's unlikely because he is either going to be not good enough and replaced, or very good and sold on. Absolutely, and I think also that also a lot of it is, and I find myself guilty of this because of my generation. I mean, is the the English Championship, Villa on the bottom half. Who the beep are Aston Villa? Mm. There's this kind of, unless it's Real Madrid or Barcelona, and it takes adjustment to think, yeah, even the bottom half of the championship is 30 grand a week and a six, seven million transfer fee. Mm. The, those clubs in the bottom half of the championship have got more money than we do. Oh, God, yeah. And, Jesus, yeah. Yeah, and okay. it just, it's a mindset thing for some older fans, especially. It's like, why would we sell a fucking the English first of, second division as they call it you know mm. why would you sell a club there because they've got much more money than us and, that, that's it yeah and, and Alfredo Morelos is a young guy who's come from uh, from his home country he's gone to Finland I dare say he didn't grow up dreaming of playing in Finland he's then left Finland to go to Scotland because it's a move up the way and it would be incredibly naive not to feel that he'll be then eyeing his next move which will be England and then you know the, maybe the Premiership then Spain, Italy whatever but it's just a fact, and we've got to be realistic about it. Except, I think, of course, uh, a true legend, somebody like, um, I don't know, Dave McPherson, Stuart Monroe, they stayed. Well, you know, they did, until we sold them. Yeah, 
That's true. Yeah. yeah. Um, speaking Whistle. speaking of of legends, <laughs> I just wanted to do this to annoy you. Speaking David, of, David, do you have a shoehorn with you? Yeah. So speaking <laughs> speaking of legends, Scott Ken, <laughs> Kenny Miller. Uh, well, Kenny Miller yes. was uh, not in the squad on Friday night. Pedro suggested he'd been injured on Thursday. But um, more fuel on the whole fire has been poured by Kenny Miller's agent with an Instagram post. And there's everything that you should hate about modern football right there. Um, Kenny Miller's agent, which sounds like a really shit follow-up to Betty Davis' eyes. But uh, so if Kim Carnes is looking, there's there's your, ne- your next hit. But... He has come out and said it's a disgrace the way he's being treated, that if they think there's a rat, they should name him, that it's not Kenny, he's a model pro, he's been fantastic for Rangers, etc, etc. Now, do we believe that the agent has done this independently of Miller and that Kenny will be shocked when when he learns of this? Do we believe that it was done... Suggested to be done by the agent to maybe get out a line for the press, and the the I suppose the logical conclusion of it, Scott, is is he ever going to wear a Ranger shirt again? Right. Well, first of all, I find this whole episode baffling. The first the first thing I find strange is that he was banished from the first team squad. With all talk about mole, he's the mole. Then the press came out and said it was not him. There's a mole, but it's not him. And he's welcome back to first team training with joyous pictures in the press of high, players high fiving each other. Then the first squad was named, and he was banished again with an injury that now his agent is hinting wasn't an injury. I, you and I have talked about this before. I think, I think we talked about it a little bit. He's either the mole or he's not. If he's not the mole, if he's not the person that's been leaking things, then I don't understand Friday's banishment from the squad after rejoining training. I think, though, now, the way it's, if you get your agent to conduct a public slanging match with the Rangers, though, it's only going to end one way, and that is a January move. Yes. I think he could have found his way back in. I think he could have played a part. Now it's looking like bridges have been burned. I can see Kenny Miller's point of view. Kenny Miller's point of view is... He probably saying there was an investigation. It wasn't me. I'm not the bloody mole. I was invited back to training. I made it up with Pedro. He picked his squad from Johnson. I'm banished again. And obviously Kenny Mill and his agent are thinking clubs are going to hear this and put two and two together. They're trying to get out. He's not a mole. He's not a dressing room leak. Please buy him in January. Yeah. He's not. He's not trouble. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. That's that's it. exactly. That's what, what Rangers are saying is a mixed. I don't know what Rangers are saying because. Is addressing what's being hinted here is that there's still a dressing room mole that hasn't been addressed and it isn't him. And even Rangers have sort of said that. Rangers have kind of hinted as well. You said to me on, on the pod that you'd heard it was for different reasons. Miller wasn't, he'd, he'd sort of Pedro was unhappy for different reasons. And that means there's still a mole there. I, Rangers, it's been a strange episode that hasn't really covered, no one's been covered in glory. And I don't know what to make of it, but I don't think Miller will play again. No, I think he'll be moving in January, probably alone. Because he, he can still do a job. And seen the SPL bottom half of the SPL, and I wouldn't be surprised if something like Neil McCann got him for Dundee. Yeah, I mean, he's got six months left in his deal come January, so I agree. He's going to go, as you say, possibly on loan, but gone kind of thing. And it's a tough one because his agent was, was playing the Magnificent Servant card. And... History will need to judge that because Kenny Miller has scored a lot of important goals for us and I'm, I'm very grateful for it. But if we recall his his second departure, because his first one, you know, he'd been left out, the manager didn't fancy him, he went out and loaned light where he was and stayed. There's nothing wrong with that. The second one was in the middle of a season because he got offered a shitload of money. And the idea that Kenny Miller has loyally with any of the clubs he's been at, has loyally went, nope, I'll do what's the best for this club, even if it's not quite in my interest, is fairly laughable. And for the agent to try and intimate that that's not the case, I think beggars credibility a little bit. I, I don't see that. And I don't blame Kerry Miller, incidentally, before, oh, what would you have done? I would have left and taken the money. 
he did he, he did exactly the right thing if someone was offering him I believe at the time it was two and a half times what his wage was at Ibrox he would have been insane not to go and, and take it for a while which is exactly what he did and that's cool that's absolutely fair and I don't think anyone can have a problem with that but what it means is you can't then play the I'm a very loyal club servant card because what you are as a professional footballer who does give his all for the club that he's playing for and no one can ever deny that about Miller that he has at every club he's been at given everything maybe sometimes he's not been on form but he has given everything but I think one of the reasons that Kenny Miller hasn't been universally loved at any of the clubs he's been at has been that streak in him where you know that he is a guy who looks after himself first and foremost and as I say I can't blame him for that and he's never taken a wage on false pretenses from anyone but he's not exactly someone who's going to go no I'll, I'll shut up and get on with the best for the greater good of the club because that's who I am That that's just not the type of, of guy or type of player uh, or type of career that he's had so I think it's just as simple as Pedro got a bit fed up with his attitude because I think I think, from what I've heard, uh, and this is this is just a theory, so please don't take this as gospel and say, well, Edgar said this is what happened. This is my theory of what happened. Pedro had tried to be quite close to him, had knew he was a senior pro, knew he had a lot of sway in the dressing room, and tried to keep him on side, played him consistently, even though sometimes it would have been more popular not to, with the support, and felt that after doing all that, Miller's attitude when things weren't going well, towards him, towards Pedro, was really poor. And that they have just their relationship has just broken down. That Pedro feels, well look, I've done a lot for you since I came here and you've never given me any of it back. And Miller feeling you're not up to the job here and you're not doing things the way I want them done. And it it it's just like in any work in any work environment, when you have that between two people and they can't work with each other for whatever reason, no matter who's right and who's wrong, that there'll be a parting of ways. And it will be whoever holds more authority in the organisation at that time. And currently, it's Pedro. So Miller will be on his way. That's what I think has happened. Yeah, I, I quite agree. And I think what today's about is, hey, clubs that want me in the future, I'm not addressing room all, I've got no baggage, you know, I'm not, I'm not trouble. Come and get me. I think that's what they're trying to do now. Is, is but it does leave the interesting question of the mole, which now everyone pretty much unanimously says it's not Miller. Miller was something else, which leaves the the leaks from the dressing room still there. But that will hopefully resolve itself. A winning. I tell you something, David. You know when leaks go away in a dressing room? Yes. When you start winning games. Absolutely. There's. there's <laughs> there's uh, very few leaks come out of a happy winning dressing room but miraculously loads appear from a dressing room where there's there's not been that success so we shall see what happens in the future regarding dressing room moles now before we uh, go on to this week's sporting integrity award we are going to take a little musical break and then we're going to come back with some very exciting news so please be ready Scott. Yes. We've done two live shows this year. We have. And both of them have been, for some reason, well received. Incredibly, yes. And people have asked us when we were doing a third one. Hmm, Seen people? Well, apparently, but I felt it was too soon and that we, we couldn't really just go back with the same lineup. Well, then an idea hit me. I should make a signing. And what a signing I have made for the next Heart and Hand live pod at the Loudoun Tavern on Saturday the 2nd of December at 8pm. Saturday 2nd December, 8pm, Loudoun Tavern, Ibrox. You're going to get a Heart and Hand live show featuring the Heart and Hand boys and new signing, Kevin Thompson. Yes, that Kevin Thompson. You're fucking getting it, Kevin Thompson and the Heart and Hand boys for a live pod. That is something which is incredible. That's the signing of the and season, isn't it? It is the signing of the season. And, of course, like all our product, will be free. 
Oh no, wait a minute. Well, no, oh. um, and we have overhead, so no, there is a fee involved if you want to come. <laughs> Tickets for this will be going on sale at seven o'clock on Thursday night, and I'm not saying that to be big-headed and saying, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, you need to. The last one sold out. The first one sold out in five hours. The second one sold out in thirty-four minutes. I'm saying this because if you go, oh, I mean, I'll get a ticket for that on Saturday. No, you won't. And I really strongly suggest if you want one, then you go to our Facebook page on Thursday at seven o'clock or you go to my Twitter account on Thursday at seven o'clock. Just search for Heart and Hand, the Rangers podcast on Facebook and you'll find us. Or um, I'm at Ibrox Rocks and there will be the link to purchase tickets for this event. It will sell out. It will sell out quickly. I've already... There are... Just shy of 200 tickets, and I already have had like 60 people get in touch with me to go, Great, when the tickets going to sale. So, if you want one, please get one. People moaned the last time and said, Ah, oh, David, you never told us that the, the tickets were going on sale before you did a pod. I'm doing it now. Thursday night. This pod goes out on Tuesday. Thursday night. The tickets will go on sale. Please, if you want to come Saturday, 2nd December, Heart and Hand live pod with Kevin Thompson. Please get them because they will sell out and then don't come to me on Saturday and tweet me and go, oh, are there any tickets left? No, there, there won't be, okay? So please, that's what to do. Uh, I've said all that now and we we'll see, we'll sell like four. But just in case, because it's, it's, I'm only going on what's happened before. I can't understand why you all want to come. This time I can because you'll be able to get pictures, you'll be able to get autographs, you'll be able to get a hug and with Kevin too if you want. Exactly. What you're going to have in that room is a bona fide Rangers legend and Kevin Thompson. Yay! I knew, yeah, I knew, you, you, were, I knew where you were going, but it didn't make it any less sweet when you got there. Yes. Okay, mm. folks. So like oh. like I say, Thursday, 7pm. Uh, this Thursday, 7pm. If you want tickets to this show, it's going to be absolutely brilliant. You'll get your heart and hand uh, live pod like you, you can expect usually. And of course, you'll get Kevin Thompson. But you'll also get Kevin will be doing uh, an interview with myself. And uh, we will... It's like when you, you know a comedian's going to tell a favourite story, but you want to hear it live anyway. You know the story I'm talking about. You want to hear it live, and you will get the opportunity to do that Saturday, December the 2nd. And we're going to get the microphones working this time. Yeah, and everything. It's, 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 it's going to be, going to be yeah. fantastic. It's, it's going to be really professional this time. So uh, that's what to do. Thursday, 7pm, Heart and Hand Facebook page, Heart and Hand, well, my Twitter account for tickets. Scott, we're overrunning time-wise, so quick ones, if you will, for this week's Sporting Integrity Award. The award where we look around the world of sport and see who's made the biggest SFA of it in the last week. OK, well, because we're running a bit short, I've got two for you, David, OK? Go on. First, Gigi Bacali. Hooray! Pod legend! He's back. But, but, he is back, he's released, as you know... From, from jail is his own team FCSB who they have to call him that because of certain legal everyone knows the story anyway he's a man from six months by the FA okay Boo, from mar- for? remarks made in summer okay yes he pledged in the summer pre-season his pledge was never to sign blacks from Africa because they're uncivilised brutes okay that's not very so, nice so when asked about that it's not nice but he was asked about this he said, for goodness sake, six months, I'm no racist. Blacks from Africa are educated brutes, but I signed the blacks from Europe. I signed those ones. Oh, Jesus Christ. So uh, he's learned a lot. He's a man of God now, remember? Yes, uh, he sounds it as well. But uh, that that's... He's learned a lot. Yes. Um, I think we should probably move on quickly. We will. To crazy. Crazy Liska. It's all gone wrong finally for Serie B coach of Paraná in Brazil, Crazy Lisca. As you know, he kept getting called crazy by everyone, okay? Mm. And last, when I told the pod listeners last time, he was imploring people to stop calling him crazy, show me respect, don't call me crazy again. He's been called crazy again, David. Those bastards. He punched his assistant manager in the face. Why'd he do that? He just had a fight with him on the training ground and he's been sacked. The club said 
Liska has gone this time. It was a day, a day we can only describe as being a day of fury. Yeah, I don't think we can argue with that. So crazy Liska is so crazy that he's finally been sacked by Piranha for this time punching his assistant in the face during a fight. And it, I think he is crazy. And I think his denial and his plea to not be called crazy may fall in deaf ears. Slightly gone out the window. Well, you know what they say, Scott? It's you shag one sheep. Exactly. I think he is Crazy Liska. And let's face it, David, see when his name was Crazy Liska? Yes. No smoke without fire. No Absolutely. Escape. It's a bit oh. like, you know, if you meet a girl called Crystal Chandelier, she's going to be a stripper or a country singer. Yes. Um, and you're always hoping the former... Well, it depends what she looks like, I would have thought. Well, uh, congratulations, Crazy Liska. As you ride off into the sunset, you can at least do it with this week's Sporting Integrity Award. OK, then, folks, thank you very, very, very much for listening. Um, my name is David Edgar. I have been your host, and I've been joined this week by the delightful Mr Scott Vandenacker. It's good to be back. It's good. And honestly, so many pods, I'm losing track myself. But this is the pod. There's a preview pod. There's Scott's thoughts. There's telescopes. There's periscopes. There's horoscopes. It's all go. Yes, there is. There's loads of places you can find us, actually. If you want to go to our new YouTube channel, then just go and search for Art in Hand. Subscribe and you'll get all our videos, uh, including after game recaps, a whole lot. You'll get their stuff there first. And also, if you missed a pod previously, they'll be up there as well. If you want Kevin Thompson tickets, you know where you need to go this Thursday, 7 o'clock, and get those tickets. And uh, I, I think that's pretty much it this week. All that remains to do is to thank our executive producers in London, Mr Mike Lee and Mr Paul Myers. My name's David Edgar, and I will talk to you again on Friday. Cheers, bye. Bye. <laughs>